Hey guys, it's your girl Ro and welcome back to another Uncensored Eats video cooking tutorial. Today I am going to show you guys how to make my marinated portobello mushroom burger with sunflower and parsley pesto and my sweet potato cayenne pepper fries, okay? So before we get into it, I was told by one of my followers that's been following me religiously since I started Uncensored Eats um she told me that she's no longer pescatarian and you know if i can do some vegan friendly slash vegetarian friendly recipes for her so like this is one of the videos i decided to go with and i'm dedicating this recipe to her because she has been a loyal follower and i'm super super grateful because she's been with me from the beginning so um some of the ingredients well one of the ingredients that i have um, is not vegan and I'm using brioche buns for my burgers you can take out the brioche buns and sandwich your your um your toppings into into the uh, into the portobello mushrooms itself so you can have the, uh, the mushroom grilled off or fried or baked and you uh, put it on the underside and put everything in it and then you use another mushroom and top it to make like a burger, you know, um, to mimic a burger bun. Uh, or you can just buy um, vegan bread um, at the store uh, or any bakery near you. For me, I love brioche buns and it is super perfect for just about any burgers. And that is what I'm using today. So now that I'm done chit-chatting about some of the ingredients, and um, dedicating this film to one of my loyal followers, I'm going to introduce to you guys what I have here in front of me. All right, so I have parsley, garlic oil, and roasted garlic, and sunflower seeds for my sunflower seed and parsley pesto. I have my portobello mushrooms right here. I have some white wine vinegar, soy sauce, red onions that I'm gonna use for my topping, some more garlic for more stuff, a tomato that I'm gonna use for my topping, sweet potatoes grain mustard um this is the dairy free um mozzarella cheese that i'm using so this is what it looks like there's absolutely no dairy in this whatsoever so if you're lactose intolerant or you're vegan this brand is really good to use they have a lot of soy free products and a lot of dairy free products and this is my veganese that I am using. There's no dairy in this whatsoever, and it's 100% vegan. In this bowl right here, I have some herbs and spices. My herbs are dried. I will have the recipe down below, so guys, be sure to check that out. I have sweet chili right here that I'm gonna use for my aioli to go along with everything else to tie this burger together. So I'm going to start by demonstrating to you how I cleaned my mushrooms. So these weren't too bad, they weren't too dirty, and for those of you who don't know, mushrooms do grow in, um, yeah, it grows in funky dirt. So um, you want to take a wet kitchen towel or a wet paper towel, and you want to take your mushroom and hold it in the center of your palm, and you take the wet paper towel and you just start cleaning it. You can clean it however many times you want, but one of the things that you don't want to do, you don't want to submerge your mushrooms in water. And the reason for that is, is mushrooms are like sponges and they soak up a lot of moisture and you just don't want that. If you were to do that, your mushrooms would be really soggy. So you just want to take the wet paper towel and clean it off and um, you will see all the dirt coming off of it. So this is why I took off of my mushrooms because like I said, the mushrooms were previously cleaned before I started doing all my prep. Another thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my spoon, I'm going to take the, the button part out, and I'm going to use my spoon to take the gills out. I remove my gills because they secrete a lot of water. Um, if I were to bake them if i were to grill if i were to do any cooking techniques with it it will release a lot of water so to have a much more uh better finishing product removing the gills is a, a much better way to go if you think this is way too much work you don't have to remove the gills it's completely up to you um but if you want a better product and a tastier product that is not waterlogged 
you can remove the gills. Next is my onion. I really want this to be nice and chunky because I'm going to grill these up with some seasonings and then add it to my burger. So I'm just going to do this and then I'm going to slice these really nice and chunky. So you want to keep the root part intact when you're doing this because if you were to remove it, then your onion would start to fall apart. With the root intact, it keeps the, the onion whole and it's easier to cut and easier to manage. So like I said, I want my onion sliced really nice and chunky and that looks really good because I'm going to season these and grill them as well. Uh, voila. And then my tomato. I want these to be really nice and chunky as well. <laughs> well, I like, I like for it to have a little body to it. Now that all my prep is done for this dish, I am going to add my soy sauce my rice wine vinegar, some avocado oil, and my spices and my herbs. I have basil, rosemary, thyme, oregano, coconut sugar, black pepper, salt, garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika. So I'm just going to pour all that in my bowl, whisk it around, And then I'm going to bathe my mushrooms in it. So you want to get all that goodness onto your mushrooms. So if you have to get your hand in there, you just get your hand in there. So when you do this marinade, you don't want That's too good. much oh. liquid. You just want enough oil and enough vinegar if you're using any of those things in it to make more like a slight... Um, watery paste but not too watery i'm going to add a little more oil into my bowl mix that up and i'm going to use this to marinate my onions so this is what the mushrooms and onions look like once the marinade is on it so you want to plastic wrap or cover your mushrooms and onions and let it marinate in the refrigerator for about 30 minutes. That way all the seasonings can soak into the vegetables. In the meantime, while we wait, we're going to get started on our cayenne pepper sweet potato fries. So I'm just going to peel these bad boys up. All right, so here's the thing. You can cut your sweet potato fries um, into wedge fries if you choose to or you could cut them into Kind of like a french fry matchstick kind of shape like um, that decision is totally up to you. So I'm not too sure What shape I am using as of yet, so I'm just going to Cut my fries however. I want to cut them So they look somewhat of a wedge fry kind of a matchstick kind of shape in a way but, um, <laughs> but that will work. Now it's time to start seasoning our fries. You can soak your sweet potato fries in water for about 30 minutes to 45 minutes, or you can soak it overnight. It is said when you do that, you remove some of the starch from the fries itself so it's not so starchy. Um, I am not doing that right now because... Um, I am hungry, okay? And I'm ready to eat this food. So I'm just going to season my fries and get them ready for the sheet tray. So here I'm seasoning my fries with some cayenne pepper, 
onion powder, salt, black pepper, and sugar cane sugar. And some avocado oil. And I'm going to add a bit of cornstarch to my fries. You can use arrowroot powder, cornstarch, a little bit of flour, whatever it is you have at home. So you just want to toss your fries into all that deliciousness and you want to coat each fry with the cornstarch. And I'm just going to toss my fries onto my sheet tray. And these are going to go into the oven at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 minutes. Now it's time to start making our sunflower seed and parsley pesto. So I'm going to add my picked parsley leaves in my food processor, a little bit of salt, a little bit of black pepper, my sunflower seeds, some of my roasted garlic, I like a garlicky pesto and some of my garlic oil. And last but not least, some lime. <gasps> oh my God, this looks so beautiful. This is dairy free. So for those of you who are out there that, that are lactose intolerant and or vegan, even vegetarian, you can enjoy this delicious Simple sunflower seed and parsley pesto. Vegan mayo. Sweet chili sauce. Pinch of salt. Pinch of black pepper. And some grated garlic. Mix this up. Now that everything is all prepped up, marinated, now is the time to start grilling or party bell on my shoes. And I'm so excited. So um, let's head on over to my stove side and let's get to grilling. Welcome stove side. My grill is really super hot. You can buy this on Amazon or webwesterantstore.com. That's where I get all my kitchen gadgets. I'm going to add some of my garlic oil that I used to roast my garlic in a little bit earlier. And I'm just going to add that to my grill pot for extra flavor. And I'm going to start by grilling my portobello mushrooms top side down. Oh my goodness, that looks really good. I'm going to flip this one over. Do the same for this and the same for this one. These look really good. I'm going to let this grill for about three minutes. The front side grilled for about five minutes. Of course, I get this really nice um, char and caramelization to it. Place it on a sheet tray. I'm going to grill this for about five minutes on each side. Wow, that looks really, really nice. That looks so good. And it is soaking up all that flavor. It is okay if your onions fall apart. I'm going to take my onions out, blend them onto my sheet tray where my mushrooms are. Top this off. That looks so, so good. I'm going to put this in the oven for about five minutes until my onions are like fully cooked through and my cheese is all melted. All right, so while everything is in the oven and we are waiting for this delicious goodness to come together, I'm going to add some oil to my grill. Get that nicely oiled up. And I'm going to add my brioche to my grill. So these came pre-cut. You just have to um, just pull it apart like so. And yeah, so I'm just going to land these onto my grill. Let them get nice and grilled. 
and head on over back to our prep station. All right, let's take a look at our bread. Oh my God, look at that. That looks really good. Look at that, how pretty. All right guys, so these are our cayenne pepper fries. The fries came out really, really nice. The color came out really nice. And this right here is our portobello mushrooms and our vegan mozzarella cheese. The only difference between this cheese and regular cheese is that it doesn't melt like regular cheese. But when you eat it, you can't tell the difference. And there's our grilled onions. Then my sweet chili aioli. My sunflower and parsley pesto tomatoes my bun that is nicely grilled okay and whole grain mustard let's start plating up our burgers so i'm just gonna land the bottom onto my plate add oh look at that that looks super super good wow my tomatoes just one stuff that in there some of my onions Wow, look at that. Some grain mustard. Pesto, look at that. That looks really good, don't it? Yep. Last. Some of my mayo. And to top it off, look at that. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at that burger. Okay. So um, let's add some of our fries onto our plate. And voila. So this is my marinated grilled portobello mushroom burger with parsley and sunflower seed pesto, sweet chili aioli, grilled onions, and my cayenne pepper sweet potato fries. So this is it on this amazing dish. I have shown you guys how to fully make my marinated grilled portobello mushroom burger with parsley and sunflower seed pesto, sweet chili aioli, and marinated grilled onions. And to make this dish complete and whole, I have shown you guys how to make my cayenne pepper sweet potato fries. Okay, this dish can be completely vegan if you take the bread out, buy um, vegan rolls, or you can just sandwich the 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 toppings in between two portobello mushrooms. But yeah, let's bite into this and dig in and let's just see what this is all about. I am super excited. Okay. Mm. Wow. Look at that, look at all that. Look at that. Let me bring this closer. <laughs> it's so cool. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Oh my god. Let's pop into my fries. Mm. So here's the thing. You can use remaining pesto to dip your fries in, or you can have a completely separate um sauce for your fries. This is very well seasoned, so it won't need a thing. You hear the crunch from the fry, it's like super crispy. <laughs> it's so cool. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. I am a huge foodie. Let's get one last bite of this goodness into. Mm. Mm -mm. 
so good. So good. All right, guys. So this is it for this amazing episode. So um, be sure to check this recipe out. Be sure to try it. Be sure to tag me when you do. If you have any questions, please do not be afraid to DM me and let me know what your questions are. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Um, this dish is bursting with flavor. You have the mustard flavor from the mustard green. You have the zestiness and the nuttiness of the pesto. Then you have the, the marinated uh, grilled veggies. And it's just everything that ties it in all together that makes this dish completely, completely, completely delicious and complete. And a lot of people say you can't enjoy a really good dish without having meat in it. And that is not completely true. So this dish is hands down one of the best vegetarian dishes you can ever have or vegan dishes. If you take the bread out, um, you will ever have. Again, try it, eat it. Let me know what you think. Let me know what your questions are. Again, guys, it's your girl, Ro. Thank you guys so much for always tuning in, being here. And thank you guys always, always, always from the bottom of my heart for the love and support. I really, truly, and greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so, so, so much. I'll see you guys on my next video. I love you all. Bye.